The simple truth is that whilst uh, Aaron Banks and Nigel Farage may be Putin fans, President Putin certainly is not a friend of this country. Russia would only have interfered in the EU referendum or any other elections here, in my view, to damage the UK and indeed the EU security. The central question that's been raised by a number of honourable members already is, has the government tasked our intelligence and security services with investigating Russian subversion as a high priority? Because the information I have from my sources is the government has not. Russia is now operating in a post-truth environment. There's no attempt to win people over to a a Russian view of the world. It is simply an attempt to confuse uh, and confound. The way it goes to market, though, in the West is through an unholy alliance with extreme leftist groups and extreme right groups too. So if you look uh, at the 45 new parties created in Europe over the last 10 to 20 years, you can now see a clear majority have some sympathy with Russia. So Germany's AFD, Austria's FPO, the Golden Dawn in Greece, Jobbik in Hungary, the Front National in France, the Northern League in Italy, and indeed UKIP, they have all taken pro-Russia positions on matters of huge international interest. If you look at the relationship with UKIP, you can see very close links. Nigel Farage, of course, famously said that uh, President Putin was the leader he most admired back in 2014. UKIP has taken consistent positions of support in the European Parliament in favour of Russian annexation of Crimea, uh, and the Atlantic Council has analysed a number of policy positions that concluded that UKIP MEPs made similar statements blaming the EU for the Ukraine crisis. The US intelligence community, looking at all of this in the round, concluded that uh, Russia was intervening systematically uh, abroad in the West. I think it would be naive of us to think that Russia was not trying to intervene here in this country. Given that it is the considered judgment of the Chairman of the DCMS Select Committee that the leaders of the Leave EU campaign have been lying, and given that there is ever rising evidence of illegality, with even Mr Banks admitting that there was Russian collusion in the Leave campaign, is it not now urgent that the Government should authorise a comprehensive investigation of what exactly did happen? After all, this calls in question the very marginal outcome of the referendum. For every 17 people that voted leave, there were 16 who voted to remain. And does that not, in turn, raise real questions about the whole Brexit process? Until recently, the government had badly underestimated the Russian threat and the response it required. Not my words, but the damning indictment of deep systemic failings in the government's approach to security the Russia report sets out. And it isn't so much the government studied what was happening and missed the signs. The truth is they took a conscious decision not to look at all, as in the case of the 2016 referendum. And if there's any doubt about the failure of ministers to look, let me tell you what the report says. The written evidence provided to us appeared to suggest that Her Majesty's Government had not seen or sought evidence of successful interference in UK democratic processes. Who provided the written evidence? Check the footnote. The Government itself. No wonder the Government was so desperate to delay the publication of this report. Sitting on it for months and blocking its publication before a general election was a dereliction of duty. Let me say, Mr Speaker, we have no issue with the Russian people. It is the Russian state that is involved in a litany of hostile activity. Cyber warfare, interference in democratic processes, illicit finance and acts of violence on UK soil. And the report finds a failure of security departments to engage with this issue to the extent that the UK now faces a threat from Russia within its own borders. When will the government treat this with the seriousness it deserves, act on the findings of the report and put the security of our country first? I have been warning about Putin's Russia for 19 years now and called for the Magnitsky sanctions for 10 years. So what mystifies me is that government ministers are still giving out golden visas to dodgy Russian oligarchs that government ministers are still granting exemptions to dodgy Russian oligarchs so that they can hide their ownership of businesses in this country, 
And I am mystified that government ministers are still taking millions of pounds from dodgy Russian oligarchs. We have to clean up our act, and it has to start with the government. The Conservative Party takes money from the Russians. Number 10 suppressed the report, and the Prime Minister forgot that his first duty is the security of the British people. So will the Minister go away and tell the Prime Minister to investigate the Kremlin's role in undermining our democracy. Under the Tories, a sewer of dirty Russian money has been allowed to run through London for years. I went to the Prime Minister, the then Foreign Secretary, in 2017, and I raised the issue of limited partnerships, 113 of which have been used to move $20.8 billion out of Russian banks. Corruption on an industrial scale. Why did the Prime Minister do nothing back then? And why is he still doing nothing now? Uh, Mr Speaker, I, I, I'm grateful to him. He's, you know, he's, uh, I, I think that uh, he, he was right to come to me then, and uh, I've always enjoyed uh, talking to him, as, I, as I've told him many times. I think he's right uh, on, on the issue. We do need to stop corrupt uh, Russian money in London and every other financial capital. No country is doing more than the UK to tackle this issue. In Blackford. Mr Speaker, that meeting was five years ago, and I offered to work with the Prime Minister five years ago and nothing has happened. The truth is that Russian oligarchs who give the right people in power a golden handshake have been welcomed into London for years. Their activities weren't stopped. They were encouraged. And plenty of these golden handshakes just so happened to find their way into the coffers of the Conservative Party. The Daily Telegraph, from 2007 to 2017, received £40,000 a month for Russia Beyond the Headlines, which was paid for by the Russian government, Russian propaganda. Um, I'm delighted that we now have a proper list of sanctions. People like Nikolai Petrushev, Igor Sechin, Sergei Shoigu, uh, Sergei Narishkin. They should have been on the list right from the very beginning. They are the very closest people to the Russian government, and they are completely entwined in the decision to invade Ukraine. I don't understand why Aaron Banks, frankly, isn't on the list either. Even Isabel Oakshot now thinks that he is an agent of influence for the Russian state. And I simply point out that Nigel Farage received from Russia today £548,573 in 2018 alone from the Russian state. So on disinformation, I'd suggest we look no further than what's revealed in the Intelligence and Security Committee of Parliament's Russia report, which warned that there was credible open source evidence of attempted Russian interference in UK elections. It painted a picture of how Russian state influence in the UK is the new normal, with deep links between the Russian elite and UK politics, and that, crucially, the intelligence community had, in its words, taken its eye off the ball on Russia. And it gives me no pleasure to observe that the Prime Minister is personally responsible for delaying, suppressing and then failing to investigate the Russia report. MPs, including myself, are now having to resort to the courts for a second time to try to get the Prime Minister to finally investigate. We are now going to the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg. This curious lack of interest in evidence of Russian state interference in our electoral processes is frankly extraordinary and stands in stark contrast to investigations undertaken in the US. When the people of Ukraine are dodging bombs and bullets, we should not be dodging the truth. 